So David asked me to talk about brand strategy, um, and that's kind of what the industry says I do. Says I do, but um, I I actually I like to connect brands with culture. That's really what I do. I think it's uh, it's more meaningful. So um, I'm just going to talk about culture because that's what I love. Um, and so yeah, that's where I grew up. Um, and you could throw a stone and hit Canadian water. Um, but because of that, I, I grew up on the border, and because I grew up on the border, and I went to school in Canada, I went to university in Canada, I moved over here nine years ago, and I've always kind of been an outsider, and I've always felt a, a bit like I never belonged anywhere. And because of that, I've, I've always been fascinated with culture and what, what defines different kinds of cultures and, and different people and why they do the things they do. Um, so this is me and some of my best friends, and we were feral as children. Um, and you know, we grew up in a in a hole in the woods. Or I I grew up in a hole in the woods, and um, I think this was like my fourth birthday or third birthday or something. So um, yeah, that's the little bit of I have a past. I feel like kind of you, you come here and you're, there's all these amazing people who've always, already done all these amazing things, and I'm like shit. I'm too young. I, I feel like I'm I'm kind of just about doing things, so it's really, really scary um, being just about to do a bunch of stuff. Um, so bear with me. Um, so there's two things. There's, there's insight and there's strategy. I just want to clarify the difference between the two, and it's as simple as insight's about looking for questions and strategy is about looking for answers. But um, questions are going to get you somewhere new, whereas looking for answers don't, don't get you anywhere, really. Um, and so what questions reveal are really interesting cultural roles. And so throughout this, I've put a bunch of questions um, because I'm hoping that it'll be useful. That's something that I thought, you know, if I'm going to come up here and waste 20 minutes of your time, at least it'll be a useful waste of time. So um, insight reveals uniqueness and opportunity. This is, I think that strategy is pretty much the same. I think people buy things for very similar reasons. But I think that when you really understand people and you really care about people, that's, that's an important point, um, and you care about your connection with them as a brand, that's when you understand a much more interesting opportunity to speak to them. So a um, quick show of hands, how many of you either work in an area or are creating a business with the word social somewhere in the first kind of line of what it is that you do? So. Right. Um, I kind of want to debunk a bunch of words today. One, I want to debunk the word purpose. It's a word that gets used a lot now. Um, I don't think we really know what it means. I also want to debunk the word social. And I want to debunk the word storytelling because I think that, again, it's a buzzword. A lot of people like to talk about it. But what does it really mean? Um, to me, social is about connecting people. And it's about people connecting. Um, and about two years ago, I, so I'm a cyclist. I, I grew up in a bike shop, and I've always really enjoyed riding a bicycle. And um, two years ago, I was approached by a little brand called Rafa. And they said, what do women talk about when they're on a bicycle? And I thought, OK, well, this is going to be an interesting conversation. <laughs> um, so. Um, I spent 18 months working with Rafa to sort out their global women's brand strategy. So how to, essentially that question of how what do women talk about when they're cycling is a question of what, how do women connect through cycling? That's actually the question. And so for Rafa, it was, it was about how could Rafa be a part of that connecting? Um, so I, I was quite lucky. I got to go on a couple of photo shoots with them. and really live and breathe the brand for a couple of years. And, um, and it was interesting. So um, the most important job I think a brand can do is to connect people with culture. Um, uh, in terms of, of all the things, you know, products can do functional roles. They can keep you warm. They can degrease your sink. They can, you know, they can keep you fed. But actually, a brand is what connects you to other people. So um, what is culture? Just a quick definition. 
Culture is the way we do things. It's the, it's the way we think about things, the way we talk about things. Um, but actually, cultures are the ways we copy each other. This is the simplest way I have to think about what culture is, um, because it's what spreads. Um, cultures can be big. Cultures can be small. Um, baking is a culture. Cyclocross is a culture. Parenting. There's lots of different parenting cultures. Italian football fandom is a kind of culture. Um, cultures are what make us feel connected with each other because they make us feel a part of something much bigger than ourselves, and that's really important. Um, especially now, we're so fragmented, you know, we're all kind of face down all the time, connecting. Um, and so every brand is a part of at least, at least one culture. So the first question I almost always ask my clients is, what cultures is your brand actually a part of? And the really great thing about this is that it's infinite. There are an infinite number of cultures out there. And if you can't find one that fits, you can invent one. That's the brilliant thing. You can, you can invent a culture. You can grow cultures. It's fantastic. Um, so a lot of people talk about purpose. I like to talk about pursuit, because a pursuit is what you're trying to accomplish within a culture. So it's, it's, you probably have more than one pursuit. There's probably a lot of things that you're trying to do. But one usually stands out. And your pursuit is that really big story that your brand is telling. So with Rafa, we were trying to, we were trying to get women to feel like cycling was an important enough part of their life to invest in. And if that's going to be, if cycling is going to be an important enough part of your life to invest in, you have to tell stories that are important to women. And stories like friendship and confidence. Um, and in that sense, what people are buying is not product. They're actually buying the story. They're buying into that pursuit. So product, I, I like to think of products as souvenirs of stories. And it's as simple as that. People don't buy products. They buy the story. Um, and that's because products are souvenirs of culture. You know, we don't live in a bubble. Everything's <coughs> created from the world that we live in. Um, so I did an interesting project last year with a company called Sky Television. Um, and they, it was a big project. Um, they wanted to know what the future of television in Britain was. Um, and we spent a lot of time talking about the remote control, because um, it's a tangible bit of the brand. It's the only tangible bit of the brand that you ever touch. And it was not a very good souvenir. Um, and it was interesting, because it's obvious people buying into the stories, into the passion of the television, into the sport. But actually, the souvenir wasn't matching up with it. So it's that bit, it's that tangible bit. It's the stuff that you don't buy. Rafa do a really good job at this, actually. And I, I really admire them for, for understanding that the value is in <coughs> something that money can't buy. Um, badges. You know, you have to go and ride 500 kilometers between Christmas and New Year's, and you get a badge. You can't buy that. That's quite cool. Um, so the task, and as you're creating brands, as you work in your own brands, is, is to sell your pursuit, not your product. It's an easy trap for brands to fall into, to just describe their products, to say, oh, I make the most waterproof rain jacket on the planet. Well, next month, somebody else is going to make the most waterproof rain jacket on the planet. So you know, tell me something else. Tell me something that I can connect with. Um, the next thing I like to, to think about is that brands need to be really humble. 
a lot I see a lot of brands these days thinking that they are a culture. We're gonna we we are this culture and the culture lives and breathes through us. No, you're not a culture, you're a part of a culture. You should be so lucky to be a part of that culture. Um, and even if you've invented it, you're you've just you've just been a catalyst. You know, you haven't actually, you know, it takes a life of its own. Culture can crush you. Culture can run away from you. Culture moves at its own speed. So it's really important to know your role. And yesterday, I loved the, um, I think it was Andy said, said something about knowing your role and knowing your place. And I think this is important because it's part of being humble. Um, and when you really know your culture or know your role in culture, um, you know what you're supposed to do. You know what's going to kind of help your pursuit and actually push it forward. Um, and when you know your role, it's much more difficult to be disrupted by other people. You can, you can disrupt yourself. Um, because if you don't know your role, you, it's easy to become complacent and other people might know your role. And they, they look at your role and they go, you know what? They're not doing their role very well. So we're going to do it better. So the, the question I say is, is that there's a... There's a sort of a set of words. Is this brand connects people through what? So this is one of my favorite brands, um, Laura Pack, butter. Laura Pack connects people through nostalgia, through family, through comfort, through baking pride. The list goes on. This is another one of my favorite brands, if you haven't heard of it. Um, Polar is... It's based out of Portland. They're just a couple of years old, but um, Polar connects people through bromance, through adventure photography, through West Coast America style. Pinterest. I love Pinterest. I'm a girl. Um, <laughs> it, it connects people through gathering behavior, like hunter, hunting and gathering. You know, this is like digital gathering. I love that. It's... It connects people through mood boards and through recipe culture and through, through weddings, through wishful thinking, through curation. Of course, Rafa connects people through road cycling, through the passion of road cycling, through suffering. Um, Rafa connects people through male and female bonding. Rafa connects people through nostalgia. But also, Rafa connects people through filmmaking. And I think this is one of the most important things about the brand is that they, whenever they make a film, it's got to be good enough to stand up against any other great film. This is an insurance company called Dog Tag. Again, if you haven't heard of them, they're, um, they're worth looking up. They, they'll insure any adventure, basically. And they really understand that when people have free time, it's important to them. Um, and you don't want to waste your, your free time. So if this, you've gone skiing and you get, you know, the lifts aren't operating, they'll cover that. Um, so they understand their role in going off the beaten path in terms of confidence. And one of my favorite brands, obviously, is Hyatt. Um, and Hyatt's brilliant because... They know their role, and they've got a few roles, and I think it's... The first is obviously their role in local manufacturing and generating a culture of local manufacturing, inspiring other people to do local manufacturing. Hyatt knows their role in the creative industries. This is really important as a sort of uniform. The role in cardigan, the role of hand-me-downs, so the next question is always, what's the social role of this product? So you have a specific product. You're not, not thinking about the brand, but a product. Um, so how does this product bring people together and make them feel a part of something? Because identity is a lot less about who you think you are and more about what you feel a part of. It's about, and research. If you're going into research, research is just another word for empathy. It's just for being able to... to Look at someone and say, I understand you. I care about you. 
So another question, what wider cultural myths are associated with your product? So <coughs> butter, it might be fat, it might be realness, home life, cravings, parenting, reward, obesity, grandma, heritage, comfort, pleasure, baking, farming, sauciness. How are value systems changing? Um, this is a question often overlooked. And this is a question of politics, economics, the environment, technology. What is it about you? Everyone brings themselves into their brand. So remember to think about you as a part of it. Um, so the strategic task is not to sell stuff. It's to create great stories that people want to connect with. Because your products are just souvenirs of your story. And in that sense, Everything is product, and everything is marketing. So what stories does the world need you to tell? These are the stories that you should tell, the stories that the world needs you to tell. Not just any stories, but the stories that have, that, that essentially are your pursuit. What are you trying to accomplish that no one else can tell? But don't just tell your stories. Um, this is something I've learned just recently. You have to do your stories. If you go out and do stuff, you have something to say. Um, because advertising products is really just kind of a very expensive way of saying nothing. Um, so I'm going to very quickly tell you about something now. Um, because I've realized in the last couple of years that the things that scare you are the same things that give you courage. Um, and I, I read that the age of the female adventure was over. I also read that 40% of women in the UK are afraid to go outside. So I want to inspire women to be adventurous and to go outside. So I'm launching a women's adventure wear brand. And we're going to make beautiful, cool clothes. Because I want women to not have that barrier to going outside. Um, I want to I make adventure something that women connect through. So we're going to sell the things that women want to take on adventure. So yeah, we're going to sell stories. We're going to sell stuff. But most importantly, we're going to sell friendship, because this is something that's so often forgotten. And this is because, and I, I really want people to feel like, you know, they can wear stuff up the Helvellyn, and they can wear it down Shoreditch High Street, because, and still feel like themselves, and still feel beautiful. I don't think women should feel shame in feeling beautiful. Um, I believe that adventure is a trip you take, isn't a trip you take, it's everything you do, and it's a mindset. And so, if you want to defect and come help me, <laughs> you can. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, yeah, thank you.